Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Just wanted to show you today my uh, DIY theremin kit based on uh, light, my light theremin kit. There are two light-dependent resistors here. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. I'm going to show you piece for piece how to put this together. And at the end, I'm going to give you a bigger demonstration showing you how, kind of talking about how it works and uh, showing you part for part. So, uh, let me just give you a quick demonstration and we'll get right into the assembly. Here's what comes with the kit, custom PCB, two 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, two 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, two 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, uh, a 100 ohm resistor, a 1k ohm resistor, 8 ohm half watt speaker, two pin terminal block, a uh, female to female jumper wire, two light dependent resistors, LDRs, two two pin header connectors, a uh, two-pin jumper, two 555 timers, and a 78LO or 7805 5-volt regulator. So first of all, let's populate our resistors and our capacitors. Sorry for not doing this in high definition. I'm getting a better camera very soon. Anyhow, for the electrolytic capacitors, they're both 10 microfarads. There's a long lead and a short lead on both of them. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative, and they go on the C6 and C4 slots. Now, uh, they're both labeled 10U C6 and 10U C4. 10U means 10 micro. So, on the uh, C C6 node, on the upper pin, there is a little plus sign right beside it. That's where you want to place your long lead. You place your short lead in the bottom lead, in the bottom hole. Uh, on C4, the plus sign is on right to the left of the bottom hole. So, place your long lead into the bottom hole and your short lead into the top hole. Don't reverse those or when you power it up you might blow them up. Your ceramic capacitors. The larger of the two kinds of uh, ceramic capacitors are labeled 104 and those are 0 0.1 micro. Now they are not polarized, their bleeds are the same size. It doesn't matter which way you populate them as long as you put them in the right spot. Now C2 is labeled C2 0.1U for 0 0.1 micro. So place one of your 104s in that slot. Your other 104 can go in the C5 0.1U slot right here. Now your 10 micro 10 10 nanofarad capacitors labeled 103 can go in the C1 slot labeled 0.01U for uh, 0.01 micro or other 10 nano. And your second one can go in the C3 slot. So your 103s in C1 and C3, your 104s in C5 and C2. Now your resistors, there's only two of them. Uh, one, the 100 ohm resistor goes in R4 slot, labeled 100R for 100 ohms, and your uh, 10, 1K ohm resistor goes in the R2 slot, right here, labeled R2 1K. They do not have a polarity, so solder them e in either way. Just make sure you're placing the right resistors in the right slots. So solder those into place, and next we'll do our 555 timers and our two pin headers. The two headers are the easiest components on the board, but you can burn yourself when you're soldering them into place. Uh, make sure that you're holding on to one side when you're soldering the other. Once you've soldered in one side, uh, you can just let the solder cool, and then you can turn it around, and, or and then you can just solder the other because the first solder joint will keep them in place. Make sure that the long leads are facing the top side of the board because we're going to be plugging in our two pin header connector uh, and our speaker into this side of the board. So long leads facing up, short leads facing into the bottom of the board, solder from the other side. The two 555 timers, uh, it might be difficult for you to see from this perspective, but the slots are here and here, and on the left side from this perspective, there's a notch in the footprint on the PCB. Left side, left side. The 555 timers have uh, notches on the left hand side. Now this is the most important thing. If you if you turn this around, you are not going to be able to uh, desolder them. It will be way too difficult. So make sure that from a topside view, 
that you're not your left hand notches face the left hand notches on the board. So, like so. You might need to bend the pins in a little bit, but and when you solder, make sure that they're flush to the board. Next, we will do our um, we'll talk about our speaker and our terminal block. As you can see, I've taken my female to female connector and I've cut it in half and I've stripped back about two millimeters of wire. Uh, what you're going to want to do is add a little bit of solder to each of those wires and you're going to want to add a little bit of solder to this pad of the speaker and this pad of the speaker. When you're done that, connect one side of the one and one end of the wire to this side of the speaker and the other to this side of the speaker. I'll show you what the final product, project, product should look like in just a second. The two pin terminal block has a terminal side and it's got a plastic side. The terminal should face outwards so that you can wire in your power connections like so. Make sure you don't turn it around when you solder it into place as it will be very difficult to desolder it and remove it. And there you have it. We're going to use this in just a minute, but for now, put that aside. Only three components left. Your two LDRs and your 7805. Now, the 7805 has a front side with writing on it, which is black, and the back side is primarily grayish white. Uh, that is the back side. You'll notice on the footprint that the front has the three holes in it and the back has just simply white on it. That's that means that the front of the 705 faces the terminal block and that the white backing faces the white backing of the footprint. So solder that into place. Don't reverse the polarity or else you won't be able to regulate down to 5 volts. Your circuit will not work. The two LDRs. What you want to do is you want to solder the LDRs facing straight up in these two slots, R1 and R2, labeled LDR1 and LDR2. Uh, and you want to make them straight, them straight and of equal length up. Now I suggest two and a half to three centimeters. So place about this much of the lead below the board and solder it so that they're about this high off the top of the board. I'll show you in just a second in case you have any doubts. Once you're done, what I like to do is that I, to save the uh, two pin short, uh, I, what I do is I cover one side of the loud pins, the two pin header uh, with uh, the LOUD right underneath it. Now, if I short those two pins, it means that I'll, I'll have a louder output from my speaker, but I'll use more power. So normally, I like to keep that unshorted, but I want to make sure that I don't lose my two pin shorting connector. Because then on the, on the, you know, it's very easy to lose. It's a very small component. Okay. Lastly, what you want to do is take um, both of these wires. It doesn't matter which one, and place them on the loud pins, or sorry, the SPK pins. Speaker. Uh, now the speaker is just a coil of wire in essence. So there's no polarity on it. Um, and what we're going to do next is we're going to power it up. Take 7 to the 9 volts DC. 9 volt battery will do. The power supply uh, terminal block has two uh, terminals, obviously. The left one is labeled V plus for positive voltage in 7 to 9 volts. And your right pin is uh, labeled GND for ground. So if you're going to use a 9 volt battery, positive to left, ground to right. So let's uh, power it up. I'll power it up first with my loud jumper off. Now I'll place my jumper on, on, shorting the two pins. So, I'm going to disapply power. That gives you a good demonstration. There are two monostable or two uh, 555 timer circuits in here. Uh, one is a straight up oscillator, one's a monostable multivibrator, or rather a stable and monostable. If you want to learn more about 555 timers, uh, I have tutorials. Just search my channel for 555 timer. Um, this creates a pulse, uh, a frequency rather, 
um, based on a resistor, two resistors and a, and a capacitor. The first resistor and the capacitor are fixed on the board and the resistance on the LDR keeps changing based on how much light is on it. Now, if you test this in the dark, you're not going to have much luck. The more light hitting the sensor by default, the more range you're going to get. So, you can just turn on the sensor, uh, turn on the device and mess around with, with the first um, with the first LDR and you'll get a reaction. That's feeding a pulse to a monostable pulse widthener, monostable multivibrator, uh, which is actually having the length of that pulse adjusted by how much light is on the second LDR. So let's power it up just one more time. There you go. So it works just great the first time. If you followed along with me, you shouldn't have any problem. You'll save more battery by keeping the loud pins unshorted, but you it certainly is a lot more fun if you have a good Duracell 9 volt battery connected to your terminal block. Uh, it should give you a lot of play time with this. A lot of fun, easy to build. Thanks for watching guys. I sincerely appreciate your uh, your time.